So we're not going to... Okay, we're up and running, so that's good. So basically what we're just going to do is run through is what your business is. We're trying to keep it light. Um, have we got any um, funny stories or anything like that? I'm, out, I'm obviously going to ask you questions. Uh, <clears throat> you get me. Normally we have, we have somebody a bit more smoother stew, but uh, we like to mix up uh, who does the podcast so it's not the same voice all the time. So Anyway, so if that sounds okay to you, if, uh, we can start if you like. Sounds good. So I'm doing you first, Don. <laughs> so okay. tell, me about, uh, tell me a bit about your, yourself first. Just short. My name is Don Mucci, and I am originally from Toronto, moved my business up to the uh, Simcoe region about 20 years ago, uh, recently moved my head office from Innisfil to Barrie. For the last two years, I've been operating my head office of LifeSquad.com here in Barrie, Ontario, and I have really love being part of this community. There's a lot of great, um, great support and opportunity here in the, in the Barrie uh, business community for sure. Okay, good. Now, you, I believe you started this, I would not say by accident, but you got a call from the school. Back in Toronto, I was a single, single mother. I was actually on a social assistance. I had just uh, gotten a bad accident driving a truck. I was a truck driver at the time. And I uh, got a note and uh, my son subsequently came home with lice and gave it to me. And I literally panicked because I had lice a lot as a kid. So it took me back to a negative place. And I went looking for help and there was nobody doing anything to help other mothers like myself. So I, as an entrepreneur, recognized a problem that needed to be solved. And I made it my mission to become the uh, superhero head lice uh, vaccinator of Canada. Yeah, I see you, you even use red cape. So that's good. But yeah. there's always been this, I remember back in the day, uh, my, my mother used to have the, the steel comb and she used to yeah. go through her hair once a week without fail. I, I imagine it must have the technology and you use organics. It's come on a long way since then. Head lice care has come a long way since uh, even when I started. I mean, those little metal combs that you had used were actually designed for cradle caps. So they were very horrifying uh, for people like me with longer, thicker hair, just basically tore the hair out. So now we've evolved and we've made head lice care uh, a much gentler and safer way of doing things by not using pesticides or chemicals, by using uh, products that are safe and gentle on the child because the last thing you want to do is hurt or disturb a child when you're trying to painstakingly remove those little eggs and bugs from their hair. Uh, they're not going to sit very long for that nonsense. So you really have to be very empathetic in the approach as well as gentle. So we have all of those tools and treatments available now uh, through LifeSquad.com. Oh, good. The, I mean, it's always been a stigma. Now you can probably correct me here, but. Um, when you get lice, there's a stigma, you're, uh, there's something unclean about you. But I believe, actually, lice, I could be wrong, live easier and clean hair. Lice do love clean hair. That is one of the lips of, uh, that surrounds head lice. In fact, the cleaner your hair, the more likely you are to get lice. The, the main thing with our company is we've made it our mission to stop the stigma associated with head lice and to stop the overuse and abuse of pesticides on children and of course our planet. So we've, we've kind of busted all of those myths about, you know, you have to be poor or unclean or, you know, unkept to get lice. It's the exact opposite. Oh, well, that makes me feel happier. My mother will rest in her grave better now. But you've, <laughs> you've been so successful now, uh, I believe, and you've got franchises. So when did you decide to franchise? When I started this in Toronto as a single mother, I was taking the bus door to door to help other mothers and families. And um, I got a call out of the blue from a woman in Sudbury, Ontario, of all places. And she said, hi, my name's Diane. I'd like to buy a franchise. And I said, oh, absolutely. And I had no idea what franchising was. 
but I knew I wanted to grow my business and I knew that there was a demand. So I uh, undertook uh, building my company as the franchise model and I made a lot of mistakes along the way, but I did learn how to do that. And she is still with me now 20 years later and we do uh, now have 35 locations operating. And we've put 35 other uh, mothers and uh, people, uh, families, mostly women in business for themselves, but not by themselves. Oh, so you started 20, well, many years ago, 20 years ago? And how many franchises? Yeah, we're coming, up on our, oh. we're coming up on our 20th anniversary and we have 35 locations operating. Most oh. of them uh, are owned by women or families and um, they're independently owned and operated, but they are not in business by themselves uh, because they have the franchise uh, as a as a sounding board and a leader and a support system. So you must be, well, I would imagine you're hit by this uh, unfortunate pan pandemic we're in, because I don't suppose you can examine people's hair through Zoom. I must tell you that this pandemic has been a learning experience. Uh, be, be, we've been hit extra hard because not only the closures that have happened, but the social distancing has really uh, dried the whole lice industry up, so to speak. You know, there's no transmission happening. What we are seeing, though, is higher um, infestations, more severe infestations. So it's mostly spreading around family units now rather than, you know, school children or camp or anything. So families are getting it not, it's not top of mind right now. So what's happening is parents aren't checking. Yeah. And so one of the children has lice and it subsequently spreads around to the family. And because nobody has had lice top of mind right now, they're not checking, it becomes extremely severe. So when people are reaching out to us, those that are are getting lice have it pretty severely and they're really in a, a panicked state because on top of everything else we've got going on do you really want to have to deal with head lice <laughs> uh, well, it's just not something to yeah so how, how do you deal with that do you have to you, you can't go to people's houses do you just send the products to the people and explain how to do it we did that at the first shutdown and we made sure that we were uh, providing educational videos for parents on how to do it themselves. So um, self combing videos, we provided the products for delivery or, or pick up at the curb. Uh, one thing I, I did was I contacted uh, our legal department and I inquired about essential services. What is deemed essential? What is not? And we were actually um, Fallen, we actually fell under the criteria of uh, community and social services. And so our legal team uh, drafted uh, letters of uh, passage up because we were then given a um, essential service. Oh. Um, a, 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 I don't know what they call it, accommodation, I don't know. Uh, but it, it, it made us available to help people that were really in need. And we really modified our service offering by saying we only see one family unit at a time, no more than three people can come in and they all have to be part of the same family unit. It's sort of like the traveling bubble. And only those that really, really need to have service should come. And we, of course, follow all of the uh, COVID uh, safety, health and safety measures and make sure everyone is pre-screened and that we're following all of the the safety and the PPE and everything so we've really modified the service we're providing um, and we're we're limiting it to those who really need it and though as I mentioned a lot a lot of people are getting lice but those that are are getting a very severe case. Uh, so I'm interested bringing in Sharon now. Um, how, how did the two of you meet in how do you walk together? Sharon <laughs> is a community superhero who I had the pleasure of meeting early on when I moved my business to Barrie. And Sharon and I uh, met just through fundraising and charitable work in the community. As anyone who knows Sharon knows, she's a community superhero. And I'm, I've yet to put a red cape on her, but she's getting one as soon as I see her. <laughs> and, and, back and, at be you. <laughs> and because Definitely Sharon... Back at you. And because Sharon is in the hair care space, I felt it was good to be uh, working with her in the capacity of having her have our products and she could also be there as a resource for people with head lice that in within her um, sphere of, of clientele. And so that's sort of how we met, right, Sharon? Absolutely. It certainly changed uh, how we view people 
coming and sitting in our chair with head lice after I had met you and found out that you had these wonderful products because before you would find somebody would sit in your chair, you'd separate their hair, you'd section it and you'd look and you'd see it and you'd say, I'm so sorry. Um, but at this, at this point in time, I cannot continue to offer the service. And I would recommend that you get your treatment. And then when you are knit free, you are certainly welcome to come back. And then there's the embarrassment, the humiliation, the, you know, are they ever really going to come back or are they so um, upset? Because it is you... very emotionally upsetting that they, they, they may not return and you worry about them. And then of course, after they leave, you've got the whole staff going, oh, you know, what do I do and how, what do I clean? And then the panic sets in. And so you've empowered me. Now I'm able to walk over and say, you know what? There is help. So Here are squatting. the products, and if you oh. need more help than that, then there is Life Squad readily available for you. So it was a game changer for sure. Sorry, I didn't and mean to interrupt you. It, sorry, the day after I bought it, I had somebody come in with head lice. <laughs> so what did you do before? Did you shave their head or just refuse to do them? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it wasn't that radical. We we aren't in the 1950s, where 50s and 60s, where parents would just do that. Actually. I've even had some that do that now, surprisingly enough. Yeah. Can you imagine being a young girl and mom doesn't know how to deal with it? So she just buzzes the hair right off and this child has to walk around hairless. Oh. Um, but no, no, we would just say, go and get treatment. And the only treatment that we knew was the really strong, powerful chemical uh, treatment. And it wasn't always guaranteed. And then they would have to come back and you would look for knits again. And, so because Dawn is able to provide a one-time application treatment, and now I am, it, it's a real game changer. And I believe going back a few years, um, just a couple, uh, when you first started, Sharon, you couldn't get better training. I believe you started at VDL Sassoon. <laughs> oh, you've heard of Sassoon's. Oh, well, you, you wouldn't know about looking at my hair, but yes, I've heard <laughs> Um. Actually, interestingly enough, I, I started off in the nursing program in, in Toronto, and it was about four months before I was going to graduate when I said, nope, this isn't what I want to do. And so I took up a part-time job cocktail waitressing when somebody at the bar, I, I was discussing, you know, I am really interested in hair. They suggested that I take a right turn and go right to Vidal Sassoon's and ask them if I could uh, be gainfully employed by them. And as luck would have it, they had a stylist walk out within six months. So they put me in an accelerated training and I was able to train with some of the best in the, in the world. Oh, that's good. How long so that was with, really cool. How long were you with Fido Assistance? Uh, that was almost, almost 40 years ago, but don't tell anyone how old I am. Uh, I wouldn't believe it. I've seen <laughs> you. <laughs> so after working in, and training and working at Vidal Sassoon's, I then uh, moved to another city and uh, opened up a salon. And so this is my second salon now. Where, I've just where, where about, was your first? Uh, my first one was in Belleville, okay. nestled in a marina there. It was really beautiful. So these 40 years have definitely um, allowed me a chance to devour just about all aspects of my amazing industry. I love hair. I live, eat, breathe hair. Wow. <laughs> not, not many too many people say that, and I've known a few hairdressers. Well, uh, physically, it does take a toll. I'm not going to lie. But uh, creatively, the, the science, the research, the trends, the, the, you know, everything. I was a platform artist, a competitor. You know, you, it's so exciting. There's always something to do. Did you do it in competition? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So you said, uh, yeah, I've won some awards. Nice. Oh, don't be modest, Sharon. <laughs> Let us know all of your. <laughs> oh, no. I, it's just, it's, a, it's an amazing, amazing industry. And uh, I have no regrets for the path that I've, I've taken. I'm glad that I'm not in the nursing program right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'll bet. laughs> And so after having all of these different tastes and flavors within my industry, I became more of a community supporter, just like Dawn, and that's how we we met, and oh, as fate would have it. I was going to come to that in a minute, but why, why did you come to Barry? I mean, Belleville to Barry, you went from, quite, it's quite a distance. Family. Family? I okay. was having my second child, 
and I wanted to be closer to uh, um, all of my relatives, all of my siblings and parents. Oh, okay. As simple as that. So, uh, yeah, I believe yeah. you actually started, did you start raw and reflective? Or was this your uh, yes. brainchild? Yes. That, that was uh, interesting little background on that. My husband and I were traveling back from Nova Scotia when these ladies across the aisle were hooting and hollering and having a great time. And I just wanted whatever they were drinking. They were having way too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly they were, they were having a great time. And I said, are you celebrating something? And they said, yes, we've uh, just raised $11,000 for breast cancer awareness. And when I asked them how they did that, they told me that they had done a naked calendar oh. and so at that point I uh, turned to my husband and said I could do that huh? and he said okay sure you can here we go so <laughs> two years ago we uh, uh, asked a lot of the people some that had actually been sitting in my chair because everybody wants to share your story their stories when um, you're in that safe physical touching environment yeah. where you're beautifying people and you're, you know, you're trying to help them with their image and you, you get a closeness, you get a bond. And so as they would say, my brother, sister, aunt, uncle, myself, anybody um, had cancer that I thought, well, let's see what we can do to help Gilda's club specifically. Cause I really didn't want to just support only one kind of cancer. Right. And so uh, gathered up a committee some models, uh, a different photographer for each page, some community uh, business supporters, sponsors, and we blew it out of the water. I didn't think we were even going to make $30,000 and we made 31. Wow. Yeah, because I, I believe that you were recognized uh, in the hairstyle industry as one of the top five salons in uh, Canada for commitment to community service. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Four years in a row. Wow. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a great achievement. That's not why I do it. You, no. You have to. As a philanthropist, it, it comes organically. My father, eight years ago, was taken to hospice as he was in his final stages with bladder cancer. And he was le less than 24 hours there when uh, he passed. Yeah. And I sort of felt like I had a little bit of a calling to the community then. So I've since then been cutting hair for hospice and Busby Center, homeless. And you know, it just, it, it, it's, not, it's not a matter of tooting my own horn. It's just that these things, they seem to keep coming to me organically. Well, you know, if it, if, it, if it fills your heart and other people feel the same and they say, well, how do you start it? Well, you just do. And well, together, yeah. it's great. Like mine's... It must be an aura that's around you of uh, people come up to you. And I, I, I know where you come from because both, both my parents died of cancer. So, and they were both in a hospital. It's not a, a pleasant death. So. I'm, I'm so sorry. They are amazing people there. They're, they're wonderful oh, as you're in sure. your final stages. But I believe that that was a sign, like less than 24 hours. And I said, do you need somebody here on the weekends to cut hair? And they said, oh my God, you're an angel. We've been waiting for you. And I, it was great. It, it, I didn't even tell anybody I was doing it because it really wasn't anything that I needed to say. It, it was more of a, a fulfilling, well, you, soulful. You don't, you don't go into these things. I mean, we do as much as we can. and We, we do everything for free for uh, any charity, local charities or anything like that. But we don't do it because we blast it uh, out. You do it because... It's something you want to do. It's oh, and believe me, there are so many hairstylists that have such huge hearts. We're full of empaths, clearly, caring about people and, and caring about how they feel and how they look. That um, cutathons have been going on for years, years and years. Everybody wants to do their part. Yeah, get the hair shaved off and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Absolutely. So, the two of you have been working together. You must have some uh, funny stories that's happened. <laughs> well, we uh, have some really weird stories that um, have happened. But, uh, I mean, I honestly have had 
the most fun getting to know Sharon, uh, just working with her in the community and and getting together at various events and dancing and having fun. Um, I can't think of a particular story that jumps to mind as far as that goes. I We had a whole bad thing happen between, not between us, but in the community, which we came together on and just further supported each other. And that's one thing I can say about Sharon is she's a supporter. She will be there for you if you need her to support you. Um, She's got a big heart. Uh, oh, and ba back Before. at you, Dawn. Back at you. You are such an uplifting and uh, elevating. Yeah, but I, I've, just, I've just talked to you now for 20 odd minutes. And I must have, I get a very positive vibe from the both of you. So I can see you both care and uh, you both work. It's uh, more than a job. I think Very that we, so. I believe we all have a, a high purpose while being here on this planet. And I think we're, we're worked through and used for specific things that we're good at. Our gifts and talents were given to us to use for uh, a purpose. And I mean, for me speaking, uh, you have to really care about people to pick head lice out of their hair. Yeah, it's not the most glamorous vocations, but um, it's very rewarding and fulfilling. And I think anyone that will t that does this work will tell you that. And I think I believe, right, Sharon, it, it's the same in hair. It's oh, very it's emotional, fulfilling. hugely emotional on their part. I've had people weep in my chair at the mere um, acknowledgement of a of a diagnosis of head lice being prevalent there, mm -hmm. and they would cry. And yeah. and you'd have to be. Very comforting. Oh. Well, it's, they're lucky to have the two of you then. I'm sure you make them feel a lot better about it. So, And uh, we'll give you one last show here, uh, Sharon, because you were saying just as we were starting that you're bringing a new product in. Yes. Yes, I've been watching a, a Zoom presentation. Um, it's very cool. It's a, a non-perm perm. So it's like a semi-permanent way of giving texture to women's hair. It's, it's pretty innovative. It's very, very cool. Oh, well, you, you could explain it to me, but you'd waste your time, so. <laughs> I, wonder, um, I wonder how people right now are dealing with their hair, Sharon. Like it seems, I, I don't know, I'm lucky I can dye my own hair and curl my own hair. And I just can't imagine people who are very dependent on their hairdressers, how they're dealing with things right now? Well, we've, we've adopted um, a stance of just wait, of wait for us. Because when they come back in, we know who's been in their haircuts and we know that their hair has been colored. I don't know if you think back to when your mom maybe used to cut your bangs as a child. We, we know when there are haircuts and scissor marks that we didn't put in there no. originally. And as far as hair color, um, gray roots that people are walking around now during lockdown are actually a symbol of loyalty. So we just feel that if you can wait, I can sell you products that can help to cover your root area temporarily until you get back in to see us. But the thought of a drugstore clerk with zero hair training, giving mm. color advice to people, it, it's quite scary. So yeah, some, some do cave and they, pull out the kitchen scissors or the nail scissors or <laughs> my 12 year old does yeah. <laughs> but a lot of them do wait and they they wear their gray roots proudly okay so thank you very much and um, we we don't we try to keep it to be around 30 minutes because that's about the time uh thank you very much for joining us oh and, thank you uh, so much oh it was, it was definitely my pleasure um, do you guys want to do like a little, oh, do you want to do like a Zoom picture as like a keepsake? I can no, like no. do a screen. Well, I, you're the only one that can do it because I'm not Sharon ready. get herself established as to how she wants to be while we're doing oh, a screen. Oh boy. Sharon, you've got, got light I, coming on the side of your face. Turn the camera toward the window. There. That gives you much better complexion. Yeah, just have the, the window facing you. That's another trick for you, Ian, when you're doing a Zoom. Never have your window behind you okay. unless the blinds are closed. Cause then you can't see your face 
And oh, when okay. you want the best face complexion, I just learned all this yesterday. You have the window in front of your face, so it gives you natural light. That's oh, cool. I've done this purposely because you don't want to see my face. So. Oh, come on. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to take a screenshot. So at the count of three, okay, ready? One, two, three. Awesome. Okay, cool. Oh. I would just like one last thing. Anytime we can help you, anytime Barry Uncover can help any of your charities or or anything we can do, please contact us. It's never, there's never a charge. It's always done free of charge. And we're very, very happy to help the local community. I wanted to um, chat with you about that because, I mean, you got to charge something. Isn't there some sort of program you can put in place where businesses like us can pay a fee or something oh, and then the, down the line for for businesses yes we'll charge you but i mean for charities or yeah or, or anything like that we do all that that for free we so, do have um, we, we do have some we do have quite a few customers at the moment and because of the the covid situation we made a decision not to charge anybody until we come out of red so we're that's doing really everything. cool we're doing everything for free and trying to support the community. So that I have a really project. Wonderful. It is awesome, isn't it? For that, to, like, I can't uh, thank you enough for, for helping Sharon and I to, you know, talk to people about our, our businesses. It's been very uh, generous of you. And um, I, I, uh, I just feel like it's so, it's, it's now's the time to really support people because yeah. it's, it's just so challenging for some business owners. Sharon, oh. I know has to shut down and that's got to be devastating. Well, we, we know businesses are actually shut down, never to return. So it's hard times and we all have to find in and help each other. So. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm but like I Uber Beauty. <laughs> Sorry, Sharon. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm like Uber Beauty, selling shampoo out of the trunk of my car. Oh, uh, well, you have to do it. You have to do it. You have to do it. Yeah. So, so. Ian, I've, I've got this... Um, thing launching in March, which is the Bring Your A-Game quiz show with Adam Grow. It's, okay. um, it's the Mayor's Food Bank Challenge. So maybe we can d chat around doing something to um, let people know about that because 100% uh, of the donations through the broadcasting of the show are gonna go directly into the Food Banks Canada COVID relief fund. So that's gonna start up in March. For sure, for sure. I used to run quiz nights. Oh, did you really? Yeah, when I lived in Montreal, uh, um, I run interactive uh, quiz night. Oh, oh, do you uh, do you do that anymore? Or you? Oh, it's you're easy enough to do. I just haven't. I mean, okay. Uh, I, if I can help, I certainly will. Thank and you, okay. Ian. I yeah. wanted to mention to you as well that uh, we're starting to wrap up the sales of the second year of the calendar, and we're sitting almost at twenty thousand dollars. Wow. Okay. which is pretty good considering that we haven't had any kind of a, a calendar launch or anything. This has all been online. Um, but as we're wrapping it up, if you're able to help in any capacity for a little boost in that direction, I'm sure Gilda's club would appreciate it. Yeah. And then the second thing that I wanted to say was, um, have you watched Outlander? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you have not. No, no, no. no Are you I... Scottish? Uh, I left Scotland in '89, so I've, I've lost a lot of my accent. Oh my goodness, you would relate no, you to haven't. this. Oh, I have. No, I've, you would. I've got home. I get called movie. a snob. <laughs> if I go home now and meet my friends, they'll say to me, oh, "I listen to you. You speak like a Canadian now." My husband's an Aussie. He gets that too. Uh, I watched uh, yeah. a video from 20 years ago, and it's definitely a thicker accent. You do Canadianize your. Yeah, you have. Your well, I have to. Little. I have to consciously slow down. Well, if you get a chance, do watch the movie because there are so many bits that you will laugh and you will get that others may not. Yeah, the, the last thing I watched was Braveheart that had an Australian as a Scotsman. <laughs> so, anyway, I better go. Hey. I've got a honeydew list. My wife left me and I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> thank you okay. so much for taking the time. No, thank, thank you very much for you taking the time and... Uh, I really enjoyed it. I must have. I really did. Where Thank will you. we hear this or see this? Uh, we will. Uh, Jane will send you the the link. She's already written an article on on yourselves. 
and we'll add it to the link and uh, we'll post it on uh, everywhere you, the postcards, postcards go, podcast, uh, Spotify, we do uh, a few more, we'll put it on our website, we'll probably put it on, we'll definitely put it on Facebook, so. Great. Okay. We will put it, we, we, we tend to put it everywhere we can to get it out as much as we can and uh, oh. to help businesses be, be actually paid to boost the, all the, everything we do. Awesome. So it gets out to a bigger audience. Awesome. Okay, well, great. Have a wonderful day and enjoy the sunshine. Oh, uh, okay. I better go and get these two kids before they wreck the house. So. Okay. All right. Have <laughs> okay. a good day Take and care. thank you very much. Bye. Okay. Thank you Bye, so Sharon. much. Bye, Sharon. Bye, bye Don. Okay.